All right, y'all. Well, here we are. Um, this is my first time ever playing this golf course. We are at Whitney Farms in Monroe, Connecticut. Um, I just let a group of three go on in front of me because I didn't really want to hold them up and play behind them. Um, but we're going to see what we can do. We're going to be playing from the white tees today. This first hole is a par four, 340 yards. <laughs> Let's see. All right, I mean, I saw it. I hit it very low, but I saw it. Let's go. We're off. All right, well, it didn't go too far at all, like 140. Um, but we found it, so that's, that's what matters the most, you know? We have 180 to the pin. I'm going to hit a 5-iron, and we'll see how this goes. Didn't really have any kind of warm-up today, but... It's all right, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll be all right. That was, that was pretty solid. Keep going. That was good. Come on. All right. Wow. That was phenomenal for me. I mean, I'm not trying to, oh man, I'm not chipping this. I'm putting this hundred percent. Let me see what we can do. I know you guys are far away. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just a little shy. Sit down. Oh, stop. That's good. Oh, my goodness. Can you believe this par putt right now? Give me a break. Oh, I rammed it. No, no, dude. Oh, man. Oh, I rammed the par putt, y'all. Hey, that's a bogey. I'm thrilled with that. Come on, that's a good start. Oh, man. Well. <laughs> came down 20 feet in front of me so that's good and fun are they done oh they are great oh my gosh well the thing is we have just about the same distance which is a lot of fun oh they weren't done anyway or are they I really can't tell Oh my gosh. Well, I'm hitting every tree imaginable. This is going to be my seventh shot. Oh boy. 81 yards hitting my seventh shot. I have a 60 degree. Oh gosh. I mean, run up. Bladed the heck out of it. Oh boy, gosh, all right, ain't nothing but a thing, just a bad hole, it's fine, we're good, we're still good, hey, we're still good, oh goodness sakes, please stop, <sighs> safe to say, this hole is cooked, basically, might as well pick up at this point, but whatever, just so you can see it, I guess. Wait. That wasn't bad for me. Okay, sorry you missed a couple shots on this hole. I'm still trying to figure out the recording and the playing thing. This is a little bit out to the right. I'm lost count. <laughs> Pretty sure this is this is eleven, which is plus six on the hole. 
not the worst I've ever done on a hole. Really think about it. We're moving on. Par three, 122 yards. See if we can put a good swing on it. I like the pitching wedge. Come on, here we go. Remember how to hit the ball. Okay. Oh, it's on the cart path. Dang it. All right, it went just over the cart path, but I don't have to move it at all. So um, here we go. Let's see if I can maybe hit a decent chip up there. Let's see what happens. It is 23 yards away. Very, very light, Benjamin. What do you got? Hmm? What do you think you got? That's that's pretty good for me. Thank you. That's way long, but got a par putt. A long par putt. Maybe 30 or so feet left to right, pretty much the whole way. These greens feel kind of fast, so I wouldn't be mad with a two putt bogey, but let's see what we can do here. I'm gonna aim pretty far left, I think. Uh, they are pretty fast. I could hit a little harder though. Well, this is still a, you know, 10 footer left to right. Do it. Oh, man, that's too bad. Oh, it's a six. It's an unfortunate three putt. It's all right though. All right, so you can't really see. Maybe I can lift you up like the Lion King. Um, so this is a dog leg left, uh, right where those carts are is about where I'm aiming, you know, to the left of it, obviously. Um, and uh, I'm not hitting driver because it would almost definitely go out of bounds. So my, hey, let me just try to put something in play. Club is a five iron. So that's what I'll be hitting. Don't look at my butt. Don't let me forget my T either. I don't know why I have so much nerves. I've put some, dist uh, some distance in between the last group and me, which is good. I don't mind waiting. Look, you know what I mean? It's golden hour. Let me know if you like my golf outfit today. Um, the shoes really make me feel like a dad. Okay, I can hit. Man. I mean, I can find it. It went straight. I have to figure out aiming. Seems pretty important, right? I guess. Whoa. I did find it. Um, yeah. I have no idea what this is going to do. But hey, I found it, so I'm going to play it. Am I allowed to move this stick? Sure. I now have a 52 degree. Try to put some loft on it. Um, and, you know, hopefully a wedge in. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see, I guess, you know. Great. Oh, man. That was stupid. We got it out. One twenty. <sighs> Going with Mr. Peter. Mr. Peter Wedge. Oh gosh, did I kill it? Oh, it hit the green. And just rolled off. I hit the green. First time that I'll ever have to fix a divot. Know what I'm saying? Listen, y'all, I, uh, if you're watching this, I hope that you're having a laugh at least or something. Um, you know, 
I'm just I'm just trying. I really enjoy golf. Uh, I'm just not just not the best at it yet. But you know, the hope is that we'll get there. Oh, Benjamin. Well, we didn't ship it in for par. <laughs> <laughs> These greens are very fast. A little left to right, and then I think it straightens out. It's my expert analysis. Be afraid to hit it, Ben. Don't be afraid to give it a run. It's for bogey. Hmm? Why not? Why not us? Why not now? Hit the hill. Just really missed the line for double bogey. Hey, take a double bogey after that really bad tee shot that was in the woods. I'll always be pretty happy when I can like actually say the score instead of just plus five, plus four, plus whatever. So double bogey. You like this angle? All right. Sorry if I sound like a bunny. I'm eating a carrot. Par four, 317 to the pin from where, from the white tees. Um, really, I just can't miss too far left. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty nice course. I mean, I haven't talked about it. This is, um, since I got a little bit of time, this is the first time that I've been here. And um, it's nice. Uh, I, don't, I don't really have much else to say about it. Um, it's, the greens are really nice. Everything is, is well maintained. Um, the cart paths are great. I don't know. Uh, it just seems like a nice course. I, uh, I like it. It was pretty cheap, 35 bucks for nine holes with a cart. <sighs> take that. And I think that was all day too. So take that. All right. I think I can find it. It was off to the right, but I think I can find it. Well, this is how close we were to being out of bounds. Um, oh, I don't know if that got over. Go. All right, another long par putt. Could you see me? Okay. Uh, it was actually pretty good speed. I just missed it. Okay, this is for bogey. Okay. That's another double bogey. I forgot where you were. You know what I have to remind myself, y'all? First of all, it's a nice view. I'm with it. Um, look at that water. Nice. Um, I have to remind myself, this is just fun. You know, I'm just, I'm just having fun. It's really all it is. But uh, look at this hole. This is the sixth hole that we're playing. Hole number um, 15 on the back nine. Let me just show you it while I'm waiting for these folks. It's a par three. I have to carry the water. I had a seven iron. Um, but now I'm going with a five because the pin is nice shot from that lady. Um, the pin is 170 and it is like downhill, but, um, I want to give myself the best chance to carry the water. So that's my plan is to hit a five iron. You'll see how it goes.
Oh yeah. I'm I'm way over. Yeah. Hey, carry the water. This is a tough hole. I'm glad I carried the water, but man, the work is not done. 30 yards, I guess. Um, man, I mean, I'm just going to try to land it just past this big mound on the left um, and let it kind of trickle down. <laughs> that sounds like something that I would listen to in a golf video, but the difference is that they'd actually be able to do it. Okay. <clears throat> Go, 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 go. I just need to hit it harder, but I'm not mad at that. Oh, goodness, man. This is, uh, <laughs> this is daunting. All right. Um, it actually looks pretty straight after this initial right to left or left to right. I like that speed. Keep going a little bit. Okay. Go, 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 go. Oh, it was pretty good. Okay. Yet another. I think that's three straight double bogeys. I'm not mad at that, really. Okay. Here we go. Oh gosh. Wow. <laughs> Holy slice. There have been some, uh, honestly, for me, three straight double bogeys is, listen, man, it's, that's, that's, you know, fine for me. The highlights are not even that high. And then the low lights are, are, uh, pretty low. So it's a little tough, but we're good. <sighs> Not sure if that's in. Don't really think so. Let's find out. Well, um, I've probably said well 45 times today, huh? Not a good shot. Not a good lie. I'm going to try to punch it out because I found it. So, why not, huh? <sighs> yeah, 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 we're in the fairway. Just took two shots. Okay, um, really, really happy with that punch shot. Actually, that was tough, and uh, and it worked out pretty well. Flags right there, 140 yards. Looks like there's maybe a little creek that's running. So um, I have a nine iron. Just off the back. Good shot, good contact, just off the back. Should have been a pitching wedge after all. It's all right. Slow down. Yeah. Dang, I think that's off the other side. Oh, I feel like I hit that pretty well. Just way too much. Man. Oh, turn. Huh. One, two, three, four, five. All right, y'all. Hole number 18, par four. It said on my app, like 209 to uh, be over there and in a good spot. OK. 
Okay. <sighs> Way off to the right, but I think it went decently far. Not bad. This is what we call why not? <laughs> I'm going to try to hit this gap because why in the world not? <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, man, this would be pretty sick. Uh, it's pretty rocky. It's 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 rocks. I'll be real. But uh <laughs> Can you can you imagine if I do this right now? Get out of my way, Buster. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, we didn't hit the gap, but we got back. We got back into the fairway. Oh man, what are we doing? I'm cold. Oh, it's 200 yards. Oh, trusty dusty five iron. Oh, well, I got chunked. Oh, 127. Mr. Peter Wedge. I want to put a good swing on this for you for you for watching this video this whole time <sighs> just off off right I might be on the green I don't know it definitely went right not on the green but that's all right we're gonna chip this with a 60 degree right over this mound right here check on down boop, 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 boop. Man, you know, like, obviously that went very far past the green. Or, uh, yeah, it landed like right here. Oh, I did it. Oh, I almost did it. <laughs> okay, that's a seven. <clears throat> all right well there's that um another nine holes of golf uh sorry i enjoyed this course um i thought it was i thought it was nice um worst part about my golfing game today when i just oh i muted it Worst part about my golfing game, game today was definitely my drives were were bad. Um, but overall, uh, I had a good time. Glad to get some golf in. I hope that you enjoyed it. Listen, uh, I'm I'm trying to get better, and I'm not hiding anything. You're seeing the real deal. All the lost balls and all the chunks and all the missed putts and all the everything you're seeing it all so hope that you enjoy it um stick around for this next part we're gonna do a bible teaching let's do it hey my friends how's it going um i hope that you enjoyed that uh nine holes of golf that was a lot of fun to film and even though you know i certainly didn't play well that was a fun time out there um i just kind of felt to come on uh here and, and just do a little impromptu thing um, obviously I'm in my car right now. I was just driving home and, uh, and, and just spending some time with the Lord. And I really felt to talk about it. Um, I, I really have gotten to a place where I know and understand that anything good that I've ever done, anything good that I'm doing now and anything good that I will ever do in my life has not been me doing it because I'm so great and because I have all this ability or skill. Anything good that has ever been and ever will be produced of my life is is because of one reason only, and that's because of Jesus living 
through like on the inside of me. Anything good that has ever been and ever will be produced in my life is because of one thing and one thing only, and that's God living on the inside of me and fruit being produced because of God living on the inside of me. That's really all it is. That's absolutely all it is. Any Anything good. I know that I am not good enough to do anything good on my own. Anything good that I've ever done, anything good that I'm doing now, and anything good that I'll ever do with my life, all glory, 100% of the glory goes to the Lord. And and I, I don't mean it to be falsely humble. I like genuinely understand and know that it all, all glory belongs to the Lord. Anything good that I've ever done, all of the glory belongs to the Lord. Let me clip this on because I'm going to the Bible. John 15, where Jesus talks about abiding in him, literally to, to remain in Christ, to be so close with him, and to, to live in him, to abide in him. John 15, Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you, you are clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. That, that really tells the whole story right there. Jesus said the, the tree or the branch cannot bear fruit by itself. It has to remain connected to the source of life. The branch, if it's cut off, cannot continue to bear fruit. Think of an apple tree, right? The apple tree, if, it, if one of the branches of the apple tree is cut off, that branch is dead and that branch cannot produce any more apples. That branch can only produce apples when it's connected to the tree, connected to the roots where it gets the nutrients. In the same way, we cannot produce anything good for God unless we are connected to the source, which is Jesus. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. Everything that we do that's good it, it comes from being connected to the source, which is Jesus. Verse five, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I, am, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. This, this uh, passage in John 15, Jesus lays out different kinds of fruit production. He says that there are some who bear some fruit, there, those who bear, uh, there are some who bear no fruit. There are some who bear some fruit. There are some who bear more fruit. And there are some, some who bear much fruit. I want to be someone who bears as much fruit for God as I possibly can. That I walk with Christ and am so connected to him that in every situation that I'm in, that I'm bearing fruit for Christ, that I'm doing good for the Lord. In every season, in every situation, I want that to be my story because I'm connected to Christ. Not because I'm all of a sudden doing such great things, you know, out of nowhere, but because I'm so connected to the source that that fruit is naturally produced because I'm so connected to Jesus. I want to bear much fruit. Everything good that I've ever done, everything good that I'm doing now, and everything good that I will ever do with my life will be and is because I'm connected to Jesus, because God is living on the inside of me, producing good fruit through my life. That's really it. That's really it. And any bad that I've ever done, anything bad, you know, that, that I've done in my life has not been God. It's been me not being connected to Jesus. Any, everything good. And, and anything good comes from the Lord and God deserves all the glory. James 1.17 talks about that. It's another thing that I recognize and that I realize in my life. And I'm kind of just sharing with you 
just just what has hit me very recently in in a different kind of way. James 1.17, the Bible says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Every good gift and every perfect gift. I recognize and, and am so grateful to the Lord that every good thing that I have, every good thing that I have is, has come from Him. This life that I have, breath in my lungs that I, that I wake up every morning, every breath that I take, that's from the Lord. A healthy mind to think and to, you know, to, to reason, that comes from the Lord. A mouth to speak, uh, a heart that beats, everything comes from the Lord. Every good gift. This car that I drive to work every day, that has come from the Lord. And I'm so grateful for it. You know, I've, there have been so many times in my life where I have complained about, you know, this or that. And it hasn't been maliciously, but I recognize that what a, what a slap in the face. You know, this is a good car and it gets me to my job. And I'm very, very thankful for this car. I'm thankful that I have a bed to sleep in. I'm thankful that I have money that bought me this Bible to read. I'm thankful for the laptop that I'll edit this video on. I'm thankful. God has been so good to me in my life and he deserves all of the glory. Again, this is, this is like a, a bit strange, but it's really just what was on my heart to, and, and I felt to, you know, hit record and just start talking from, from the Bible and, and from what God has really made, made real to me in a different way in my life. Every good thing has come from the Lord. God, God is good. There is no one good but God. Jesus said that. I don't have the reference. I would look it up on my phone, but I'm using my phone to record. I'm thankful for a phone that I get to record this kind of thing. God, God has been so good to me. He's blessed me with great jobs. There have been times where um, I've wrongly complain about the jobs that I have. I shouldn't. I'm very thankful for the jobs. I'm thankful for a healthy body that I get to work the jobs that I have. God has been so good to me. So good to me. There's no one good but God alone. Jesus said that. Somebody came up to him and said, good teacher. I believe he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, why do you call me good? There's none good except God alone. Jesus there is pointing to the fact that he, he is God, but he's also showing that God is good. God is the very fullness of good. He's, he's the definition. You look up good in the dictionary, it's God. God is so good. He's been so good to me in my life. I'm so grateful for all that he's done. I was thinking about this recently. Um, I, went to, I went to college and my relationship with God was not very tight. I, I went to church, but I really didn't know him. And so as a result, I made decisions based completely on what I thought was best for me to do, what I was interested in, you know, what, what my passions were, whatever. And God had a, a different plan and a different calling for my life. He called me into the ministry uh, after I graduated from college and after I, you know, really got close with him and really began to know him more. And I, I was thinking to myself, man, I'm so grateful that I know God and that now I'm led by his spirit and, and that I'm walking in his plan and will for my life. I'm so grateful because God knows where I would have been and what I would have been doing if I kept going my own way. You know, I, I don't know. You know, I wouldn't have the friends that I have now. I wouldn't have the relationships that I have now. I wouldn't be so involved in, in the church that I'm so involved with. I wouldn't get to see all that God's doing in this generation. I would have missed out on so much if I had kept going my own way, what I thought was best. The Bible talks about that too. There's a way unto man that seems good, but in the end leads to death. I know that if I had continued going my own way, it may have seemed like everything was working out for a little bit, but eventually it would have all fallen apart. I'm so grateful to know God and to know the spirit of God and to be led by the spirit of God and walking in his will for my life. The plans that God has for, for me, the plans that God has for you watching this are good plans, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and to give you a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. God sees your end from the beginning 
and he has good plans for you. God is just so good. He's been so good to me. And anything good that I've ever done, anything good that I'll ever do, anything good that I'm doing now, God gets 100% of the glory for it. God gets 100% of the glory for it. I'm just so grateful to the Lord. He's been like, I can look back, I look back on my life and, and you know, I'm not, I'm not like an old man. Some of the youth students uh, think that I'm an old man sometimes, but <laughs> um, I'm not an old man, but I, but I can look back on my life and just, just say, wow, God, thank you. That was, that was a blessing. Thank you, Lord, that I, that I didn't end up doing what I wanted to do in that season of life. That would have been terrible. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for the friends that I have. God's just been so good to me. And, and maybe you're watching this. And again, I was kind of just speaking out of my spirit and out of my heart, just what, what the Lord's been like really making real to me in a different way recently. Um, but maybe you're watching this and you haven't experienced God's goodness in your life. Let me encourage you. God loves you so much. God cares about you so much. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, that we can cast our cares unto God for he cares for you. God loves you. Actual. God loves you. And he has a good, good, good plan for your life. He does. God loves you so much that he came down to earth and died a death so that you could know him and so that you could experience all the good things that he has for you. If you've never entered into a relationship with God through Jesus, let me, let me tell you the gospel real quick. The gospel message is simple. Jesus Christ, who was and is God, he came down to the earth. He became human. He humbled himself and became human. And he lived a sinless life. He didn't mess up. He didn't do anything wrong one time. He lived a sinless life. And then he died a death on a cross, on a cruel cross for you and me, becoming our sin, which, which would have separated us from God forever and all the goodness of God forever. But Jesus became that sin for us. He paid the full price of it. He died on the cross. He was buried in the ground and he rose from the dead three days later. And now he makes intercession for you and I so that we can know God and know his goodness and taste of his goodness in this life and in, in eternal life forever. And all that we have to do, the Bible says in Romans 10, 8 and 9, is believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord. Confess with our mouth that God raised him from the dead and we will be saved. It's that easy for us because Jesus did all the heavy lifting and all the hard work. But he did it because he loves you. He did it because he wants to have a relationship with you. Listen, I don't know, I don't know who you are on the other side of this camera, but God loves you. He created you and he loves you and he wants to know you and he wants to show you how good he is. God is so good. If you've never made Jesus your Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. It's nothing magical about the prayer. It's just an outward expression of, of what of what of the decision that you've made in your heart. So if you want to do that, repeat this prayer after me. Say, God, I believe that you sent your son to die for me. Jesus, I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again for me. I'm done with sin. I want to know you. No longer am I a sinner. Now I'm a saint. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, let me encourage you. You are right with God. You are right with God. You have relationship with God through his son, Jesus, and everything that he did for you. And this is the beginning. God wants to know you. God wants to make himself so known to you and so real to you. He wants to show you how really good he is and how much he loves you. If you did make that decision, please, please, please drop a comment. Let me know. I'd love to help you in any way that I can answer any questions that you might have um, and, and help you find a good Bible believing church. Because because that's important. That's very important. This was a bit different. I really just felt to come on and just kind of just kind of talk out of, out of my spirit and talk 
from from my heart what God's been been really working out in me recently. God is so good and he loves you. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for uh, watching the video, I guess. But love you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.